Now on KGW News, don't pull over for this car. I mean, it it would probably fool just about everybody. How police caught a man pretending to do their job. Also tonight, desperate parents struggle to find formula. I feel like we're literally running out of options. How Oregon's trying to stop sellers from taking advantage. But first, after a year of searching, divers discover what happened to a former local mayor. You know, it's one of those cases that we just could not let go. Your news starts now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm David Molko. And that dive team today discovered the car belonging to the former mayor of Cornelius, Ralph Brown. And tonight, investigators confirmed inside that vehicle, human remains. Our Alma McCarty spoke to Brown's family and to the divers who wouldn't give up. It's been almost one year to the day since Ralph Brown's disappearance from his Washington County home. On Friday, after a year of questions and uncertainty, finally a resolution. That's really what we're getting today. At the Rogers Landing boat ramp in Newburgh, the Washington County Sheriff's Office learned Brown's vehicle was found in the Willamette River, submerged 40 feet underwater. It's really kind of just been us waiting for someone to stumble across the car, just hoping that just today the day is today the day, and luckily today was the day. Megan Clausen is Ralph Brown's granddaughter. When I first got the call from my mom, I just broke down in tears, happy tears, because I was just so glad that someone was still doing something and that they, they gave us the answers. Those answers from a dive team run by Doug Bishop and Jared Lysak. It just kept nagging at me that we could not let that go. Adventures with Purpose, the search and recovery dive team has been working with Ralph Brown's family for the better part of a year. They tell me they've done 10 searches for him overall, four alone in this location. We started at 9 a.m. and we got right to work. You know, within within an hour and a half, we discovered the vehicle, and then it's a very you know long, drawn out, tedious process to make sure that everything. It's an underwater forensics vehicle recovery, so the importance of everything going according to plan is, you know, the, the evidence inside of the vehicle, you know, is is it has to be taken care of with the utmost integrity. It took Adventures with Purpose, a local towing company, and law enforcement until 7.30 in the evening to pull the car from the water. Investigators found human remains inside. The Yamhill County Medical Examiner will work to identify those remains. I think about three or four months after he went missing, we kind of all accepted that he probably wasn't going to be coming back alive. Megan says her family is beyond grateful for Adventures with Purpose. I honestly am speechless with what they've done for us because although some people in the community like you can't go out forever they've never they've never stopped it's never closure for the family they said it's an answer you've given us answers and resolution that we can move forward in yamhill county alma mccarty kgw news well, let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. Portland Public Schools is once again recommending all students, visitors and staff wear masks while in school buildings. Now that extends to big events like graduation and prom. This is not a requirement right now, merely a recommendation in a letter to parents tonight. The district said they were following Multnomah County guidance that now also recommends masks indoors. The murder trial of romance novelist Nancy Crampton Brophy heated up today over what she allegedly said while in jail. The jury was asked to step out while lawyers argued over whether Brophy's former cellmate should be allowed to testify. Brophy's accused of shooting and killing her husband, Dan. Nancy allegedly told the former cellmate she was standing within feet of her husband when he was killed. Brophy's defense tried to discredit the witness by pointing to her criminal record. The judge has not yet made a decision. And a stolen car with family heirlooms inside has been found. Chris Thompson says he was playing disc golf on April 30th when his car was stolen at Pier Park. In the trunk were pictures, some family mementos, and a few other non-valuables. Yesterday, his car was found in St. John's. The vehicle was damaged, but all of his stuff inside, and it was still there. New tonight, there is a surprising twist in Portland's crackdown on street racing. Well, police were on patrol in North Portland when they noticed something was a bit off. Another man trying to pull drivers over, pretending to be a cop. Catherine Cook gives a look at his car that even investigators admit was convincing. 
this was definitely a surprising um, thing for these officers to see. It was Saturday, May 7th. Portland Police Sergeant Kevin Allen says officers were on Marine Drive near Kelly Point Park on a mission to catch street racers. But around 8 o'clock that night, they caught something else instead. They end up finding somebody who is impersonating a police officer. Police say 20-year-old Jonathan Bautista Limon was behind the wheel of this black 2019 Dodge Charger. Take a look. It has red and blue lights and a police-style push bumper. These lights were really, really convincing. I mean, it it would probably fool just about everybody. Fortunately, police say it didn't fool the guy Bautista Limon tried to pull over. Instead of stopping, he called police. They determined pretty quickly that this was not a legitimate police officer. Inside the Dodge, police found an airsoft handgun and a fake security badge. They arrested Bautista Limon and cited him for criminal impersonation of a public servant. They also towed his car. We believe that if he was trying to pull over one car, he might have been trying to pull over other cars. Police want to hear from other potential victims. And check this out. That same night, they also stopped this car, a white 2014 Chevy Caprice. It had a police-style spotlight and detachable white flashing lights. Inside, they found an airsoft pistol, tactical vest, and duty belt with a gun holster. Police towed his car, too, but did not charge the driver with a crime. What makes it a crime is how these objects are being used. The irony here is community members have been begging for real police officers to show up and address street racing for months. Investigators don't think Bautista Limon was out here looking for justice. We have no indication that this person was trying to be a vigilante or stop cars because uh, he was frustrated. The suggestion I'm getting is that it was really more of an opportunity for him to try to participate in some of these events without uh, potentially being caught. What is the police bureau's response to neighbors in those areas that feel like this isn't a priority? Yeah, we understand there's a lot of frustration surrounding this activity. Um, you know, when people are hearing and seeing this dangerous driving activity, they really want it addressed. The true reality is we just don't have the resources to do it on demand. What police are doing is bringing in officers on overtime for special missions like the one they ran last weekend. They'll be doing those sporadically all summer. Penalties for street racing could include losing your car, up to a $500 fine, and 30 days in jail. David. Glad to see you staying on the story. Thank you, Catherine. Well, an update on our homeless crisis and the so-called safe rest villages the city initially planned to open by the end of last year. Now, after delay after delay after delay, the first site, the Queer Affinity Village, welcomed its first residents. It's located on southwest NATO across from an elementary school and for months that's caused some controversy. A neighborhood group is asking the city for background checks on residents. Also no camping within a thousand feet of the school and a community advisory board to give input on each village. Now that is the only request that's been approved so far. Another village is scheduled to open later this month. The others are still in the initial planning stages. Portland Commissioner Dan Ryan insists the rest of the villages will open this year. And as for that pushback from people who don't want them in their neighborhoods, he says the conversation is ongoing. I asked him about that on this week's Straight Talk. I've learned in this process is that it can be a roller coaster in terms of you when you're negotiating. So we're at a place now where we're back at the table. We're, we're compromising. We're listening to one another. We've had great conversations just in the last two days, and I'm really thrilled that we have the right people at the table, including the leaders of the school community. So we're making progress for a safety plan that will be really supported by that will be helpful to both the villagers and also for the school kids. Ryan is running for re-election, and a poll back in December showed only about 10% of voters said they'd choose him again. His closest competitor is A.J. McCreary, the founder and executive director of the nonprofit Equitable Giving Circle. But she made headlines of her own this week when the Willamette Week reported she paid her 15-year-old son more than $3,000 from her publicly funded campaign. Now, that's not a violation of campaign finance laws, but it did raise some questions. I asked her about that on Straight Talk, and she explained the payment. He did my website. You can see it on the website that it says made by, managed by Hobbs Waters. He sends out all of my communication. He's done a ton of research. Uh, he's not the only youth that I hired on my campaign. I also hired Danny Cage, who is a known activist in town. I believe in paying people. I also believe in multi-generational work. 
and collaborations. And so it was important both from the beginning to pay people as also to have young voices on this campaign. And you can watch the full interviews with both Dan Ryan and AJ McCreary on Straight Talk tomorrow night at 630 or on the KGW YouTube channel right now.